Thank you, thank you very much. And um, just, wait, just before we started, Martin was trying to take a photo in order to tweet because he said we need to tweet something. And um, I'm actually sort of slightly cautious about this because my uh, last tweet was from my pocket. I managed to tweet the letter K. Just on its own, the letter K. And as you can imagine the kinds of responses I got back. A uh, deluge of replies, most of them just said, Ed Balls. <laughs> I think that was a step forward because the last time I did this from my pocket, I managed to tweet, Hugga, 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 And at that time, I got back replies which just said, What changed how a politician talking sense? <laughs> So, um, but it's all tribute to Ibrahim, that he is the only person who could have got so many. I think, frankly, I thought he was going to have the entire shadow cabinet here to make speeches this evening. Politicians who are not just talking sense, but actually talking about campaigning that they are doing and that the party is doing right across the country. And my God, don't we need it with the state of this government at the moment? And seriously, I mean, you look at the damage that they are doing, you look at the chaos of the Brexit negotiations, and it, it, although it seems unsisterly to say it during the 100th anniversary of the first ever women's votes, you do have to wonder, is Theresa May the worst ever Prime Minister? And actually, I kind of end up, I have to say no. Because I can think of somebody worse. And that is David Cameron. Because he got us into this mess in the first place. Whether it is the austerity and the scale of cuts that he pushed through, the injustice that divided the country, or the chaos of a Brexit referendum without having any clue how he was going to handle it and what plan he was going to have, and then disappearing off afterwards. But the truth is, I can actually also think of somebody who would be an even worse Prime Minister, but who really, really wants to be Prime Minister, which is Boris Johnson. <laughs> with even more buses that we would have driving around, with even more promises for him to break. And I can think of somebody even worse than that who also wants to be Prime Minister, which is Jacob Rees. Oh. Whoa. You know, I mean, this is a man who thinks that actually, even if women are raped, they should not be able to have an abortion. And a man who thinks actually food banks are a good thing because they are the kind of thing, the fact that we need so many food banks is something that is somehow inspiring for the country when actually it's something that we all know is a desperate shame that we have so many people leaving them in the first place. But when you can kind of think David Cameron, Boris Johnson, Jacob rees you have to say the damage those three are doing to this country, Eton School should be put in special measures for the damage those three are doing. when we have the already such wide inequalities in our country, already working people on low income having to go to food banks to put a hot meal on the table, and at a time like this, they want to take £2,000 more away from working families by introducing universal credit. And I would say it's not just unfair, it is immoral what they're trying to do. And that's why the Labour Party matters more than ever. That's why the campaigning that Jeremy and the Shadow Cabinet are doing against the rollout of universal credit, to stand up for people across the country who are having a tough time, to talk about great ideas for rebuilding Britain and inspiring hope. It's why it matters more than ever. But it's also why, as well as rebuilding Britain, I think we've also got to start bringing Britain back together again. 
and dealing with the divides that I do worry about across this country. And not just the divide, the deep unfair divide between rich and poor, but also between young and old, between city and town, and yes, also the Brexit divide as well. And the divide too that means we have seen the rise of extremism, but also the rise of abuse. We've had hate crime figures out today showing a rise in hate crime, and some of our own. MPs like Diane Abbott and Luciana Berger subjected to hate, abuse and death threats. And that's why I think we in the Labour Party also have to stand up for a kind of gentler politics and stand up for our values and for bringing people together as well. It's what Joe Cox said when she said we have more in common than that which divides us. And it's why we also know in the Labour Party we're stronger when we pull together than when we leave each other to sink or swim alone. And that's why if we didn't have a Labour Party, we'd have to invent one. We'd have to invent the trade union movement all over again if we didn't have a trade union movement. And it's why the Labour Party and the Labour movement matters so much now. And it's why the work that all of you are doing matters so much now. To build a fairer country that we believe in, to stand against the injustice, because we are stronger when we stand together than when we leave each other to sink or swim alone. Thank you very much.